Today we're going to set up Zephyr Extra. We start with a new box with everything we need in it and we're going to first open the box and see what we have that comes with the Zephyr Extra. First and most importantly we have the DCS-51 which is the heart of the Zephyr Extra. Next we have our power supply which is a universal power supply. We're going to plug that into the wall to power our DCS-51. We also have a quick start guide. We're going to follow this quick start guide to set up our Zephyr Extra. Now we have a few other things that are going to come in handy as we grow and use Zephyr Extra. First we have our Zephyr Extra manual. It will have everything in it that we will need to know to set up and run our Zephyr Extra. We also have a mobile decoder manual. This mobile decoder manual is very important. It's really going to help you as you grow in the hobby uh, with, our, with DCC. It will help you program decoders. We also have an LT1 Loconet tester. Keep this handy. You're going to wind up using it a lot in the future. and of course a catalog. Okay now, let's start by opening the package that our DCS-51 is in. We are then going to open the package that contains the PS314 power supply. Look and make sure that you have both the power supply itself as well as the cord that runs from the power supply to your particular wall outlet, your AC power. We take the cord and plug it into our power, the power supply itself, the PS314. That's what it should look like. Next we're going to plug in our PS314 power supply into the DCS51 itself. You will notice that on the back that we have a round power receptacle for the PS314 to go into. And we plug it into the DCS51. And we will notice that we have power. Next we're going to connect a piece of track to the DCS51. And we're going to connect that track to our rail outputs to the layout that are listed as rail A and rail B. What we will do is we will loosen the screws in our terminal plug and we're going to insert two wires that I have previously stripped back and tighten those wires by use, tightening the screws, checking and making sure that the wire is in securely. Also make sure that you haven't connected the wire with insulation in the plug itself. Also make sure that you have good wire connections inside with Without having any insulation clamped into the screw part. 
Now let's look at a few of the features of the DCS-51. First we have the throttle. You will notice that it turns from stop to full. We also have our direction selector switch which also acts as a brake. To select a locomotive we're going to use the loco key. So let's look at a few of the lo a few of the keys before we go further. We have the loco key that allows us to select a locomotive. We have a series of numbered keys one through nine and zero. This will allow us to select any numbered locomotive we wish. Also the zero key you will see a small light bulb by and that helps us turn our light on and off on the locomotive. We have a steps CV key. This will allow us to program different CVs or configuration variables in our decoders. Another video will talk about how to program decoders. This key will be important at that time. We have our power key to turn power on and off. You press it and you see the track status light come on. That light should be on solid. If it is, we know we have power to the track. We have a switch key. This allows us to use the DCS-51 to throw switches or turnouts on our layout if we have a stationary decoder such as a DS-52 or a DS-64 that is connected to switch machines on our turnouts. We have a recall key. After we've used the DCS-51 and put several locomotive numbers into the DCS-51, this will come in handy to select locomotive addresses that have already been put in there, allowing us to just press this and bring back the addresses of previous locomotives. We have our exit key. Anytime you want to get out of whatever it is that you've been doing with the Zephyr, simply press the exit key. We have our program key. The program key will be used to pro uh, program decoders. And we'll talk about that on another video. Mute key. The mute key is going to come in handy when we're running those locomotives that have sound in them and are set up to uh, mute on function number eight. And we have our function keys, function plus 10 and function plus 20. In order to access all of the functions on many of the new decoders, we have to use these two keys. For instance, to access functions one through nine on Zephyr, all we have to do is press the various keys, one through nine, to access functions from 10 to 19, we simply press the function 10 plus 10 key and we will see that it lights up. That will then allow us to use keys 1 through 9 to access functions 11 through 19. If we press the function plus 20 key, we can then use our keys 1 through 8 to, function, to access functions 21 through 28. Let's run a locomotive. In order to select a locomotive, the first thing that we're going to do is to put our direction selector switch in the brake position and our throttle to zero or stop. We will then press our loco key and you will see the number flashing in the display indicating that we can now select a new address. Most decoders come from the factory set to address 03. Let's select address 03 by pressing the 3 key 
and then pressing the loco key. You will notice that we now have 03 in our display and it's on solid indicating that the DCS-51 is set to run locomotive number 3 or address number 3. Then all we have to do to run the locomotive is to place our direction selector switch in forward or reverse. We'll put it in forward and turn the throttle. The locomotive then should begin to run in the forward position. If we want to reverse direction, we simply use our direction selector switch and move it to the reverse position. Now one nice thing about this switch is that it will allow us to change direction in a very smooth manner by simply changing the reverse switch to brake and then to forward and not have to touch our throttle at all. The locomotive will slow down, stop, change direction, and then go back up to the speed that we have set in our DCS-51 with our throttle. We currently have a sound-equipped locomotive on the track. Its address is 03, and we have that address selected in our DCS-51. To run the train, all we do is advance the throttle. To slow it and stop it, turn the throttle back to stop. To show you the functions of some of the keys, associated with sound locomotives. We press the one key that has a small bell by it and we get our bell. If you want to blow the horn you simply push the number two key that has a horn symbol with it. You notice that As long as I have the number two key pressed down, the horn will blow. The moment I let up and release it, the horn stops. The number two key is the only non-latching key on the DCS-51. All other keys, as long as you have them activated, they will continue to be activated until you press the key the second time. Number three will give you coupler clank on this particular sound decoder. Other sound decoders may be different. To turn the headlight on, we press the zero key, and the headlights will come on. To turn the headlights off, you press the zero key a second time. If we're through running the uh, locomotive for whatever reason, or if we wish to do something with the track, we can always turn track power off by pressing the power key. Should we wish to run a non-DCC equipped or analog locomotive with the Zephyr, we simply press the loco key, we then press the zero key, and press the loco key a second time. Now a locomotive that is not equipped with a DCC decoder can be run by the Zephyr in the same way that we've run the DCC locomotive. You place the direction selector switch in forward or reverse and turn the throttle and it will then run. It's that simple. When we're through running our analog locomotive we can press the loco key and if we press the exit key then that particular address has been dispatched out of the DCS-51. You're now ready to run any number of other locomotives. 
to connect a program track to the Zephyr since it has a separate program circuit and allows us to program locomotives while we're running locomotives what we would do we would use two wires not connected to the railroad but connected to a separate piece of track and we would connect them to the program A and program B outputs. We've connected our two wires again to program A and program B. You will notice that there is a empty slot between the two wires and that's the ground terminal. So make sure you have your wires connected again to program A and program B. Once that is done you will be able to program on that separate piece of track.